What's up, ladies and gentlemen? It is the King and I Life podcast, hosted by myself, Soul Touch of the Poet, and my brother, Son Soul X, in his joint. Check it out. Hit us up www.kingandilife.com for all our podcast info. Subscribe to whatever podcast platform that you choose. Also, hit us up k i n g a n d e y e three six nine at gmail.com. Email us your suggestions, your feedback, and all that good stuff. Tune in to us live on Facebook, YouTube, and Twitter, Wednesday, 7.30 p.m. Eastern Time. And make sure you like, subscribe, and share because we are all over all those social media platforms. Stay tuned for the good stuff. Yeah, we out. Ladies and gentlemen, ladies and gentlemen, ladies and gentlemen, King and I Life Podcast. You know what it is. We back on this topic, science or religion. Um, uh, hey, if you're on YouTube, like, subscribe, share, comment, bell notification, all that good stuff. Um, it's your boy, Soul Touch of the Poet, and my brother. Son, Soul Lex. But um, we're going to jump back into it, baby. Um, so, what I wanted to say. Mm-hmm. When it comes to old scientists, new scientists, uh, younger generation this, younger generation that, you know, the thing about science is somebody's always figuring out something new or updating what was. This has been going on since the dawn of time. So... To me, that back and forth debate is, eh, whatever. Um, because the the way I see it is, jokers used to think this this planet was flat. They thought when you got to one end, you'd fall off, <laughs> and they thought that for a long time until some. One got the bright idea to notice that there was a curvature far off when they stared far off. And then they took into account, if we look up at the moon, it's round. Someone got started creating uh, binoculars, telescopes, and all this, and they started noticing other things. So science has been proven, disproved, updated since the dawn of time. Um, The thing that I like about science is that stuff is still being discovered. And and I'm talking about natural stuff. I'm not talking about this this nonsense they're doing in labs and stuff like that. On the other hand, when it comes to religion, here's where I have another problem. Um, People talk about how great God is, and I don't, but let me back up a little bit. I'm not an atheist, but I'm not super religious. I believe in a higher power. But I, 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 I myself do not have concrete anything in order for me to lead someone to believe whatever. I know where I stand. And I know that I'm not an atheist. I just don't put too much weight in, you know, religious philosophies and stuff like that. But the great thing about science is things are being discovered every day. Um we still don't know everything about this planet. Um, What we do know is that we are destroying it. And the only ones that can save it is us. Well said. There is no God, there's no act of God that's going to fix this planet. 
The reason why I said that is because I had a conversation with someone on Monday when I went to work about prayer. And I was like, what are you praying for? Oh, I'm praying so that you can be a better person. I'm like, <laughs> what? <laughs> Why would you pray about that? Oh, because you this and you. I'm like, and what is prayer going to do? Because for any individual to want to change, they're going to have to change. You praying ain't going to change nobody. It's just not going to change anybody. That's just like if a person wants to stop drinking, smoking, doing drugs or whatever the case may be, it's on them to say, you know what? I've had enough. Now, I know that I will be I will get some rebuttal from someone saying, you know, if they pray on it, this happened, this happened and this happened. My thoughts on prayer overall. And, and I may be a little ignorant. And somebody might laugh at me, sons of Rex. But um, when I look at prayer, when I really, really look at prayer, when I get in my head mm -hmm. and think about prayer, when you pray for something good to happen to you, you're praying that something bad happens to someone else. The reason why I say that is Let's just say me and you were going out for the same job. All right. And you don't pray, but I do. I'm praying that I get this job. I get this job and you don't. You see where I'm coming from? Yeah. I'm praying for some good luck to happen for me. You're hoping that you get this job. I got on my knees and prayed and prayed and prayed. I got the job. That means you got dirt, dealt a dirty hand. Now, some religious people will look at it a different way and, and, and put it in a way that says, well, oh, he didn't pray enough. Oh, it was your time. But we both equally needed that job. We equally needed that job. It was a life or death situation. And you're telling me that because I prayed, I got the job and now you have to suffer. All right. So I'm not going to say it's pushback on that one. I, I'm going to say I did have a different interpretation, right? Okay. Um. <sighs> We we both want that job, right? Um, but look and look at it as we're both equally qualified for that job. Okay. We both want the job and we're both equally qualified for the job. You prayed to get the job. Mm hmm You got the job. Mm hmm Um, the way I look at it is you got the job. Mm -hmm. No more, no less. Mm -hmm. um, so you got the job. I can't hate on you for get, for getting a job. Now, whether you praying has something to do with it or not, I can't say for sure. Mm -hmm. But I can't say that's a bad thing that you got the job and I didn't. Because you needed to be in that job at a particular time as certain um, energy, a certain space, a certain destiny, if you will. It was just meant for you to have that job. Mm hmm and that's just what it is, no more, no less, meaning I'm not, I don't have any lesser luck or bad luck or um, because you prayed, that don't mean you're praying for my downfall 
or you're praying, you know, that I didn't have enough um, the will of God to get that position. It just, you got the job. You, you follow what I'm saying? I'm not saying that because you got the job, your luck was better than mine or because you prayed, you got the job. It just, you were the person that they chose. That doesn't mean, again, that it's a negative thing that I did not get the job. You know what I'm saying? It's kind of like, it's not a negative thing. I don't see it like that. You follow what I'm saying? Yeah, I get what you're saying. And I'm not saying that it's a negative thing. Mm-hmm. My, th- my, my, my whole thing to that is people put so much emphasis on praying for things to happen that if you pray, it's going to happen. And my counter thought to that is, okay, so you prayed and your prayers got answered. This person didn't. So they got the short end of the stick. Not that it's a negative thing. It's right. just that you're telling me that God answered your prayer for this job. So this person needed this job as much as you, but because you prayed, you got it, and this person is left out. I agree. If it's meant for this to happen, this happens. But for me, I can't I can't put that, I can't, I can't attach that to prayer like that. I okay. just can't. No problem. I can't I can't attach it to prayer because it's like hell if we both same qualifications we both interview good and they was like well we're gonna take you then they just chose you but when I when I talk to people who who talk about prayer so much mm-hmm. this is my counter thought to what they're saying because I was like, but well if you pray for it this happened if you pray for it this I happen and then then and that's when I say well so you're saying if you pray then this person will get better and this person will be left out in the cold. Then they say, oh, no, that's not what I'm saying. Then I say, so what are you saying? And their response is, you have to pray for what you want. But what about the person who's not into prayer? Like, then what? Like, help me understand, like, like, help me understand the full thought of it because I want you to articulate exactly how this works in this vast universe because if you're hanging so much on prayer faith and this and that and the other then i'm going to sit there sit there and say well damn well because this person didn't pray they get nothing or because you prayed this person gets shorthanded that's just the counter thought to it all right gotcha um let me put it to you like this right I get everything you're saying, and mm-hmm. I agree with you. I think prayer doesn't have anything in overall to do with it. I, I'll say that. And again, I'm I'm like you. I'm not a, a very religious person. I'm not an atheist either. But what I do think is this, right? Remember earlier I was talking about how, you know, we know a lot of bad people and it seems like they're so successful in life and mm-hmm. they're cutthroat like mm-hmm. do anything they'll they'll stomp their mama out in order to get to where it is they're trying to go mm-hmm. um and then we have another group of people who we've seen them do absolutely nothing but do good all their life and, and the most from fucked it. up <laughs> horrible goddamn things happen to them um, and we're always sitting back wondering, like, why? Like, mm. why would, and, and some religious people are like, why would God let that happen? And that was my question for a long time. It really was. That was my question for a very long time. Mm-hmm. Um, but then I learned that, again, I don't care what you call what you believe to be God, whatever you call that um, entity by, whatever it is, I don't care. But for the sake of what I'm trying to explain to you, let's, let's say the universe, right? 
why would the universe allow that to happen? The universe don't give a flying fig Newton about who good or who's bad. The only thing the universe cares about is balance. Balance. So you can have uh, 10,000 good people and 9,999 bad people. The universe is always going to maintain balance. So if the universe got to knock out or take out one person off of that 10,000 that's good, then it's going to do so. It's going to make it even. So when you see all those drug dealers out there running around um, with their fancy cars, you know, throwing money like it's no thing. And you're saying to yourself, that's such an awful person. One thing you're not taking into account is that person, that drug dealer, is busting their ass to make that money. Now, by the means they're making that money, is it right or wrong? Who am I to say so? Depends on where you at morally with it. Exactly. Who am I to say they're they're right or wrong? Because that same damn drug dealer could be the one who was making sure that all the kids down at the youth center are getting their uniforms. That same drug dealer could be the one who's them making sure your grandmother lights are still on. Just because this person is getting their money in a way that's not by society's um, idea of lawlessness or lawless or within the means of the law. Who the hell am I to judge them and tell them they're wrong when these damn pharmaceutical companies are making billions Billions off the drugs that they supposedly have tested and FDA approved. But the next thing you know, people are still dying from those drugs. They're making billions while this drug dealer is only making some thousands, if they're lucky. The big ones make millions. But we all know they get taken down sooner or later. But the point that I'm making here, people, is the universe only cares about balance. They don't give a damn what color you are, what your background is, or uh, your educational level, or who your mama or your daddy was, or your grandparents, who they were. It don't matter to the universe. Is all about balance, meaning whether you got a hundred people who are good or a hundred people who are bad, as long as it's balanced out, that's the only thing the universe cares about. And people could could get, be mad with me for saying that, and I get it, I understand it. You you're free to think that way, just like I'm free to think what I think. But again, we got all these people who work within the laws, meaning these corrupt politicians or these corrupt doctors and lawyers and police officers and firefighters and hell, the people in my line of work. (laughs) You know, who's to say that we're all on the up and up? One man's interpretation of someone who's good and 
righteous and um, wants to serve mankind is not the same as another person's. If you take, uh, I'm trying to say someone here recently that people will know, uh, Gaddafi, right? People on the outside of Gaddafi's uh, where we we all know him as a tyrant, or we've been you know shown that he's a tyrant, but the people within his nation, some of them regard him as a hero. So again, it's all about interpretation. So again, we might say that he's a a, a terrorist or a a very bad man, <laughs> but again, you know, someone who grew up within his nation that he was always kind to or looked out for their their parents or that particular person, their opinion is completely and totally different of that person, of Gaddafi. So again, I, I'm bringing it back to the big picture of balance. The universe only knows balance. If you want to say God, fine. Attach God to the universe. That's just the way I see things. And again, you are, are free to tell me I'm full of F. I, I'm full of whatever it is you think I'm full of. <laughs> but again, that's that's the only thing that I've been able to come up with as far as like an explanation. Because, again, if you look at the world, man, there are so many good people dying. Um, you know, every time you turn around, this person has died, that person has died. Um, you know, good things like they say happen to, or bad things happen to good people. And you like, why is that? Why would this person who served their community and, you know, has always treated people good all their life die of cancer? That sucks. It's all about balance. Well, he was preaching, but uh, that was too far in the woods for me, man. <laughs> <laughs> that was way too far in the woods for me. Lord. <laughs> but um, to take it back to what you were saying in the beginning of that, um, you know, when it comes to science and religion and and bad things happen to good people. Right. And talking about doctors and stuff and this, that, and the other. People will say, okay, let me put it a different way. Um, All right. There are things that can be answered for me scientifically as far as health and this, that, and the other that can't be answered with religion. What I mean by, if I go to the doctor and say, oh, I have a pain back here in my mouth. They can say, oh, you have a cavity. And they can explain to me all the many ways I get a cavity. You can't explain that to me religiously. And I know some people out there be like, oh, that doesn't, that doesn't make sense. That doesn't, it, it's not equal. I can't pray a cavity away. I can't pray to not have a cavity. I have to scientifically do the things that I was taught to do to prevent it. And nine times out of 10, I won't get a cavity. Someone can explain to me scientifically why wisdom teeth grow in a certain way. I can't pray them jokers to grow straight. Um, another thing that I will say is that they say that God is perfect. God does no wrong. God knows right. God knows God is omnipotent, omnipresent, omni this, omni that. Um, 
someone needs to help me understand how the average person on this planet can say with conviction, passion, and the fullest confidence and in the name of the Lord that they were born in the wrong body. Ooh. Because for me, wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. Hold up, hold up, hold up, hold up, hold up. Not to cut you off. Say that part one more time. They say with conviction, with passion, etc., cetera, etc., cetera, in the name of the Lord, they were born in the wrong body. All right. So. You mean to tell me that a perfect God that created all of mankind made all of these mistakes? Hush your mouth. Hush your mouth. Come on with but it. But a scientist can say, we pull strands of DNA from what we know as men and what we know as women, and from what we know as men, this is what their DNA makeup is. What we know as women, this is what their DNA makeup is. And every species on this planet, minus those who can actually change their gender, from what we have studied over thousands of years or whatever. This is the genetical makeup of a man. This is the genetic makeup of a woman. But you have people saying, I was born in the wrong body of the wrong gender. And now we have people saying, I don't have a gender. I'm binary. I'm this, I'm that, yet you are praying to the same God that people have been praying to for thousands of years, and you're literally telling the universe, as some Solex like to say, that God is wrong. That's what they are saying out here in these religious streets. Boy, you dropped a bomb just then. Science or religion, baby. We gonna be back. We gonna be back again. If you're watching this on YouTube, it's two parts. If you're listening to wow. audio, one part. Like, subscribe, share, hit that bell notification, and make sure you comment, comment, comment because we want that feedback. Soul touch of the poet with my brother, the Sun Soul X. We gonna be back, baby. Yes, sir.